Hello everyone. I am here to talk about VR today and I'm going to start with a story, a very basic one. So I'm just going to talk about what VR is and how we are going to utilize it and what are the advancements in the field. So what is actually VR? VR is an abbreviation for the term which we use as virtual reality. It is a simulated environment which can be a lot similar or can be a lot different from all real world environments. Some of the things are, so I actually, I work as a Unity developer. I have been working from past three, three and a half years. I have worked on several games. I have worked on several applications. Uh, and now I work in the industry of experiences and interactions. I used to work in a company, in a company named Kalpnik. It was a startup company. And now I work in a company which is named as Morph Digital Solutions. We give our clients some corporate solutions for their products. While working with VR, I have actually experienced a lot of things. So talking about a bit myself, I have studied game development. And while studying game development, even though we were making some games, I got assigned a dissertation about VR. So the dissertation topic was how VR can be used to enhance our overall gaming experience. And that was one thing which actually, you know, made my interest right, risen up towards the subject. I tried, so uh, actually told you about the talk today. And uh, this was the first device. This is the device which is named as Google Cardboard. I, this was the first device which I have worked on pre, uh, as a developer. Now you can, you can see on your, on your left side, you can see there's an image, a sketch, and on the right side, there's a Google Cardboard image. You cannot specify, you can see that there's much of a design similarity in both of them. So on the left side, the image, the sketch which is there, it is from, a nine, it is from the year 1960, a developer, uh, actually a filmmaker and a VR producer. So his name was Morton Haleig. He was, a, he was a really good VR pioneer. He invented other devices also. And this was his sketch for the first telesphere mask. So you can see there's not much difference in the design. So this was a device which he invented later on. The device name is Sensorama. It was created as a concept for creating, you know, it used to give users multiple stereo sounds uh, in the environment. And it also included some of the haptic feedback, which I'm gonna talk about later in the talk, but yeah. So it included chair vibrations. So if a person sit on the chair, he'll feel the vibrations as per the interactions. And it also had a mechanism of a fan in front of your head. So it'll blow wind in your head so that there would be some kind of, you know, sensible. During the decade afterwards, we had an inventor named Palmer Luke. He invented the device named as Oculus VR, which released on Kickstarter initially. The device got so popular that after some time, Facebook bought the whole Oculus VR company for $2 billion. And today in the market, we have this device, Oculus Rift. It is one of the most advanced devices which came in VR family. And right now it supports a 90 degree horizontal view and a 110 degree vertical 3D stereoscopic view. So this, this was the device which was one of the most pioneering device which actually made the VR industry go up. This device is named as Oculus Quest. This was, this is the latest release in the Oculus family. This device actually includes one of the most advanced technologies because it includes all of its cameras on the outside of the device. Because of this device's capabilities, now we have four-weighted four -weight, rendering, which would allow users to interact in VR without using the controllers because, and it also helps an accessibility for the users who doesn't have, you know, who doesn't are able to use, properly use the remote controls. One thing which I actually missed out, I should have said earlier, is a degree of freedom. So Oculus Rift initially came with a deg six degree of freedom, which is abbreviated as six DOF. I would like to explain what DOF means. So degree of freedom actually means that how a rigid body can move in a 3D environment or in a three dimensional space. There are, two there are two topics about it. One is three DOF and one is six DOF. 3DOF is basically pitch, yaw, and roll, which is in three dim uh, only in three dimensions, which is considering pitch as this, uh, yaw as this, and roll as this, so in, a, in multiple directions. And we have a 6DOF, which is surge, heave, and sway. So surge means you can go in position forward, you can go in position backward. Heave means you can go left or right, and sway. So after a degree of freedom, I actually wanted to talk about haptics feedback in a bit of a detail. 
suppose we humans how we react to some things we have senses we react to someone pinching us we react to someone calling us by us our name so we hear the name and we react to it or we smell a food somewhere delicious food and we go locate the food so those are all senses now imagine if we actually able to come up with those senses in our virtual environment how immersive we can make the experience in a more in, in a more you know detailed manner i would like to support uh this haptic feedback topic with uh, some research I, i did on a research paper it was written by jose l solar dominguez he actually written the paper by making it as embodied cognition theory so the hypothesis states that the senses which the senses which are very basic to us such as normal sensing acting thinking are natural are, are very naturally independent so they don't have to relate with each other so the human cognition is made of some method based portrayals we the element of haptics should be added in the vr system design because all of our vr interactions are actually physical this is one of the devices which i really wanted to talk about uh, so before i discussed oculus rift it was one of the devices which included haptics feedback in its initial release and htc vive is another device it is released by HTC and Valve Corporation by a collaboration it used a technology which is mentioned as room scale technology suppose you are moving in an environment suppose this is our specified area and we are moving it but we are moving physically into it. how the room scale technology works is it would define a specified area and whatever movements you do in the virtual in the real environment would be reflected in your virtual environment so suppose you are in a game or you are in a building and whatever you are moving in a specified area will work in the game HTC Vive Pro i is one of the latest devices which HTC released Oculus Rift was the Oculus Quest was the device which enables the capability of wireless so generally how we work with VR is we have to connect our wires to the system to the device and then it works so it needs a rendering capability for the system but with Oculus Quest there were those capabilities got thrown out because it gives you wireless now you don't need to actually connect the wires to the system it is the device which gives you forwarded rendering which disables the use of regular motion controllers so in order to play something in order to view something in vr you would require an application on your system so supposedly on a pc for oculus they released a specific application which was named as oculus vr and it was used on a system to you know it has it always has to be running on the system for the oculus to work similarly htc also had a device which uh, htc also has a software i'm sorry uh, which is named as steam vr so uh, all of you guys may be knowing about steam it is a pla- software distribution platform and steam vr is one of the extension for that platform so basically you do not need steam to be running all the time uh, only steam vr can work on its own but in order to work in order in order for htc to work you need steam vr i would like to mention some of the games uh, which i actually thought that received a lot more feedback uh, very pro- promising feedback from the audience first game i want to talk about is no man's sky which is a game about exploration and endurance it is about how you can explore in a limitlessly procedural generated world regardless of whether something is inaccessible supposedly a mountain a, a plane you can go there and even if there's an outside planet or you see a star in the sky you can actually visit that star explorable capabilities are very much in this game one of the things which i why i wanted to mention this game is because early releases did not supported any vr kind of support but now after considering the vast area of the game developers have released a beyond update which you can see in the image that there's a beyond update which actually capable uh, gives you the vr capabilities So another game which I wanted to talk about is Beat Saber. You a lot of you guys may have heard about the Beat Saber. It's basically Dance Dance Revolution. So there was a game named Dance Dance Revolution which was a physical game which you can move around. And so this this game is the same as that. It just now you have lightsabers in it. When you, at the initial point at the starting of the game, it maps a red or a blue saber saber to every one of your movement controllers. You can see a drifting stream of red blocks, blue blocks coming to your way. and which you can cut using the right bearing using the right saber at the right time both of these games which i mentioned no man's sky and beat saber both of these games are actually available on steam also they are available on oculus store also 
and PS PlayStation. Another game is Minecraft. I think everyone would be familiar with Minecraft. So Minecraft is a game which was created by a Swedish developer. His name was Marcus Persson, and it was released by a company named Mao. The game allows you to build different blocks in a very 3D procedurally generated world. And it requires a lot of creativity from the players to generate separate buildings or separate worlds. This game is a bit specific. Why? Because it's not available on every store. They have released specific versions for it, which is Minecraft, which was a Gear VR edition, Minecraft. And one was the Minecraft for Oculus Rift. So it is uh, not available on Steam. Considering the technology, considering how we work in VR, how, what devices which we have, one of the devices which I actually want to talk about, which is not VR, but an addition to VR, is the Leap Motion. So Leap Motion is actually the name of the company which invented the Leap device, uh, which you can see on the screen. Uh, that, that device actually uses infrared technologies in a way I think it's no less than brilliant. It gives you the capabilities, its, it's sensors are, the, it, it uses two IR sensors and three IR LEDs to map a spherical area of around one meter. So whatever sensors capture, it renders those 3D representation of the object which are seen. The device is actually very useful when you are working with uh, interactions, when you are working with games. So you would not require to use any controller or any keyboard or mouse. You can just use your hands and they will be physically rigged in the 3D environment. I will play the video for, to, un to make you understand a bit better. So this was the video which I wanted to show to demonstrate how leap motion is being actually used. So you saw that we can use the hands for several interactions while being in the scene. You saw that we can use multiple boxes, we can create multiple boxes of different sizes. We can use these interactions as very basic hand gestures, supposedly pinching and dragging them apart. So you can set the size also. And it also enables you to give a 3D interactive UI, which can be used on either of the hands or anything else, which can be used supposedly by flipping the hand or any interaction. Some of the basic stuff is leap motion can be used in two ways. So one is you put it over your, you mount it over your HMD or you use it in a desktop setup. HM, uh, I've displayed in the image how it can be mounted on HMD. So while working in the industry, while progressing industry and how seeing how VR is being used continuously. We have seen that it's being used in multiple ways and I would like to mention some of those. So VR is actually being used in training a lot. So training in healthcare, supposedly you're a doctor and you want to train some of your other doctors, some juniors or some seniors about some particular medical device. So what you can do is instead of, you know, inviting everyone to a room, inviting everyone to a place, and using the resources there. You can just create a virtual environment in which you can create the machine model in a very detailed manner and everyone can join that room and have an experience there. So similarly in manufacturing also, so most of the companies while manufacturing try to have some of their design and development prototypes. So once they do the prototyping, then they move on to the product and if there's some fault in the product, they have to do, uh, do it again and again. So there we can save a lot of resources. Same, similarly, we can just use the whole process, take it into VR 
and try to you know reiterate it again and again without using some resource one of the very interesting topics is law enforcement how training is being actually used in law enforcement so police officers have different training modules one of one of them is supposedly can be aggressive some of them can be defensive and their program setup can be different so some of them can be in the outside environment some of them have to be in the inside environment like an interrogation room so instead of making those officers go to multiple places what you can do is you can create a building in the virtual environment and in the building you can give multiple rooms where you would be able to train them simultaneously without using the resources to travel or commute or anything like that other industry which i want to talk about is tourism and entertainment which is a very intriguing for me and for others users also supposedly a lot of you guys have traveled a lot of you guys must have traveled from some other cities within india or maybe from outside india international travel everyone whenever you are traveling you have to go there you have to check out the rooms you have to book the travel tickets you have to book the commute how you'll reach there and what i'm what i'm suggesting here is the same thing is what you can do in via so there's a company named amedus it group which actually created a prototype of how you can use these uh, via methods in tourism i would like to show a video of the same imagine if you could search for flights walk through a plane to select your seat book and pay for your trip using virtual reality we live in a 3d world why shouldn't we shop for our future travel this way an amadeus company navitair unveils the world's first virtual reality travel search and booking experience travelers will be able to select a destination and a date for their flight Once selected a traveler will pick the flight and see the aircraft seat map to select a seat. You will also add other services to your booking. Once you have all set for your trip, you can move ahead with the payment. This could change the way travelers will purchase trips, helping airlines and other travel companies become the next generation retailers. In the era of the empowered traveler, Navitair and Amadeus are helping airlines to shape a personalized customer experience at every stage of the journey. So this was the video for that and Another thing I want to talk about is in retail and marketing how we can use VR specifically in retail and marketing consider how we shop normally how we shop normally is either we go to Amazon or we go to any other portal to buy our clothes or buy our other services but sometimes you have to go and you have to see does it actually fit or how how does it look when you wear it so in a more realistic environment you want to experience it with VR retail and marketing what we can do is we can create an experience of a store suppose suppose a zara store and you can create a virtual environment in which you can go through the clothes you can go through all of the accessories and you can wear them and you can see how does it look and how does it feel which is way more immersive in a way rather than just buying online so that is also something which i really wanted to talk about so the future of vr how how we consider how we have moved from the very early stages where we just had a telesphere mask as an invention and we had google cardboards as an invention because it was one of the first handheld devices in which you can put your mobile and you can experience vr vr social is one of the things which are actually the future why because giving an example about it is you are a group of friends you are five people or 10 people and you wanted to go out to watch a movie somewhere you saw that okay now we have to commute to a place or we have to go to a theater and take the tickets from the box office and then go inside and watch the movie so a lot of this would require at least some of the planning 
But with VR social, what we can do is, is what we have actually right now available. So in Oculus Rift or in other stores, if you go to the Netflix app, their own default app, you can actually invite a lot of people, somewhere around six to seven people. You, they all can join a room and afterwards they can all start the movie watching together while interacting with each other because they are in a virtually created room which is present. Some of the statistics I want to display is regarding how it has increased from previous years. So you can see from 2014, we had 62.1 million revenue in US million dollars. In 2018, it moved to $1,160 million. And this year, 2019, it's almost double. So it's 2,450. So I'm not sure about the statistics uh, in 2,450 million exactly, but I'm guessing just because of the Oculus Quest, it has actually made it a lot better. You can see the predictions have gone much, much higher by 2025. So it has reached $9,310 million. One of the things I actually wanted to talk about also is a lot of people are considering using VR and AR in a more accessible way as possible. So you can see I'm wearing a spectacles. A lot of people are considering that in these spectacles, you can integrate the VR functionality as well as AR functionality. So suppose you're wearing spectacles and these are normal glasses. You can switch between VR, you can switch between AR, and then you can switch to normal. So that is something really far-fetched idea, but that is one of the things which is, you know, really predicted for the future. So in conclusion, I've covered some of the very basics and a little advanced topics in VR from an overall perspective. We saw that even in the previous sketches, even in the initial sketches, there was not much sketch uh, like design difference in what we have today. And we have also seen the popularity. So during the early stages, the popularity was going up and down and up and down. And it'll still be like that because I still believe that we are the technology itself has not reached its peak time till now. I would like to end this talk with a quote from Mr. Churchill, uh, which I believe is an inspiration for VR technology. Success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Thank you. All right then, I would, I would actually encourage all of you to please work more towards VR so we can make the technology more conven convenient. Thank you.